Here's kind of a finished example of a slab sawn piece. You can see the uh, angle on the edge with the sap the sapwood showing there uh, that it's obviously um, not anywhere near the center of the tree. And although the grain is you know uh, certainly quite beautiful, it uh, was not without its uh, shortcomings in terms of uh, producing the piece of uh, finished surface. It's got a lot of glue and epoxy. Uh, and uh, a lot of effort to, to, to stop this grain from raising and to finally finish it off. And you can see the checking. I mean, there's lots of checking. Uh, so, you know, it's not nearly as, uh, as uh, user-friendly, let's put it. Now, here is, here's a piece of Honduras mahogany. Again, I'll try and hit it with the shellac, just to try and highlight the, see if it brings up the grain a little bit. And you can see it's pretty much quartered. So this would be a suitable piece for a through bass uh, neck or uh, guitar necks. Uh, you'd have to you might you might have to laminate that to do the headstock properly uh, rather than have it as one piece. But that's kind of uh, a good example. Here's one where well we don't have to varnish it, but you can see that the grain is not perpendicular. So this would cause uh, issues because it would move in, in a sort of non uh, absolutely predictable. Uh, uh, means so the way to around this would be to uh, to cut it and then to well, you'd have to think about how you would do it in the most appropriate manner but to cut it and then um, reverse book match it so you you would uh, kind of like here's a, a maple a chunk of maple where it was a, a slab sawn board I can tell which side is which. Yeah, no, that's the quartered side exactly. So here was a slab sawn board, cut down the middle, flipped back. So that's the court, that's the uh, book match. But so the the, uh, the grain tendency is in this direction and in this direction. So the lamination uh, counteracts, and so you have you created some integrity where it previously didn't exist by choosing how you laminate it together. And here's another example where you have, uh, this is kind of a piece of furniture that was salvaged to do a kind of a carving exercise. And you can see on this one that indeed the grain is quartered, but it's in the opposite direction that you'd want. You want it in this direction to, to, to get your strength because you're, you know, you're uh, one piece in the kind of family of quarter sun that's most famous, uh, and that is uh, oak. I'm not the biggest fan of oak, but it's a magnificent wood. It's very hard. You can see the grain. This is a piece of old flooring, of course, and it's exactly perpendicular. And what's the result? You have a beautiful shimmer that only uh, oak comes up with in this manner. There's lots of other woods that have some wonderful behaviors. Lacewood is an example. Um, you know, but it, uh, wood is uh, sorry. Oak is very, very, uh, very famous for this kind of feature, and a lot of furniture uh, quartered oak is uh, is the bee's knees. Uh, to recap, what we what were we talking about? Quarter sawn, which gives you boards that have perpendicular grain on the end, which have uh, tremendous sort of stability and strength, um, and kind of a very consistent. Uh, behavior that you can predict and work with structurally. Aesthetically, it's also, you know, very, very straight lines. Uh, slab sawn, on the other hand, you can get some very exciting grains um, because you're, you're getting the, uh, the rings of the, the uh, tree uh, are presented in, a, in another manner and they can be quite beautiful, but the behavior of the wood is quite different and not as predictable. So sometimes you have to work um, with that in mind. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in architecture, uh, check out michaelwilsonarchitect.com. I work in wood among other materials and uh, thank you for uh, watching my video.